In this video, we're going to take a look at simplifying rational expressions. To simplify rational expressions, our number one tool of choice is going to be factoring. If we can factor these expressions, then often what we're going to see is a term that is on the top, often a binomial, and uh, also in the denominator that we can cancel out to simplify. So let's take a look at some examples here. Let's start with this one. On the bottom, we can do some factoring here. What do those two things have in common? Well, I can take a 2x out of both of those. So what I'm going to have on top is 2x over, I take a 2x out of the bottom there. So I have 4x squared divided by 2x is going to be 2x. And then 6x divided by 2x is going to be plus 3. So I have 2x over 2x times 2x plus 3. Now, if I have something in both the numerator and the denominator, I can simplify it, just like any type of fraction. So what I can do here is simplify this, simplify this. When I do that, remember, I'm just dividing by uh, the same thing, top and bottom. So I really replace each of those with a 1. And then the whole expression becomes 1 over 2x plus 3, like so. Okay, So don't forget that 1 that's left there. Sometimes people want to flip that up to the top, and that's not the case. We have a 1 left on top there. That 2x plus 3 is in the denominator. So that's the first example. Let's go over here and take a look at this one. Again, factoring is our tool of choice. We want to break up each of those expressions and see if there's then something in common that we can cancel out between the two. So for this one, on top, huh, this looks like a difference of squares. So that will factor as x plus something and x minus something. And what squared gets me 49? Well, that would be 7. So x plus 7, x minus 7, that's on top. Then on the bottom, I look at this, and I'm looking for factors of 7 that add up to 8. Well, that would be x, our terms, we have the signs are going to be plus and plus, because that's plus and that's plus. So plus and plus, and my terms are, or my factors of 7 that add up to 8 are 1 and 7. So then, I've got that factored. Now, take a look at what we've got. Well, there's an x plus 7 here on the top, and there's also an x plus 7 here on the bottom. So those can cancel out. Just divide by the x plus 7 on the top and bottom to simplify. Remember, that becomes 1, that becomes 1. And we're left with, well, on top, we have x minus 7. And on the bottom, we have x plus 1. That's all the simplifying we can do here. Sometimes people want to simplify that x. Well, we can't do that because it's not being multiplied. This is addition and subtraction. We can't simplify something out of there like that. So that's all we can do. It's simplified. All right, then let's kind of make our way uh, clockwise around here. Let's try this one. Here we have, again, something we can factor on top. Let's see what we can do with that. A trinomial. Let's see. Factors of 8 with a difference of 2. We want to end up with plus 2. So that's going to be, well, it's going to break up into two things. Signs are going to be plus and minus because that's minus. So plus and minus. First term is going to be x and x. Then I want to end up with a plus 2. So my larger term needs to go with the plus. And in this case, that's a 4. So plus 4 minus 2. Again, if I foiled that out, it would get me back there. That's an important piece. Then on the bottom, we've got a trinomial again. But don't forget, the first thing that we want to do is look for a common factor between all of the terms and see if we can't pull that out front. And in this case, there is something we can pull out front. Because we have x to the third, x squared, and x. I can take an x out front here. So we have x times x squared. So I'm dividing each piece by x. 
minus 2x and then minus 24 because I divided by x there. Now we have a trinomial here. Looks like something I might be able to factor. Let's give it a try. I'm looking for factors of 24 with a difference of that negative 2 I want to get out of there. Well, let's see. 6 and 4 I think will work. So let's break that up. On top, we're just going to bring those along for now. x plus 4 and x minus 2. On the bottom, we have that x out front. Don't lose track of that. Then here we have two binomials. It's going to the signs are going to be plus and minus. First term is x and x. Then those factors of 24, we said 6 and 4, and I want this to end up being minus. So I got to put the larger thing with the minus and that's going to be 4. So I have x minus 4 and x plus oops, I goofed that up. It's going to be x plus 4 and minus 6 minus 6 because I want to end up with the negative 2 so I have to put the larger one with that okay so then again remember you could double check that by foiling it out getting back to here then we look top and bottom anything in common we've got an x plus 4 here and an x plus 4 here hey those will cancel out that becomes 1 that becomes 1 and we're left with what do we have on top? Well, x minus 2 is left there. And on the bottom, we have x times x minus 6. Okay? So that's simplified. Got rid of quite a bit of stuff there in our process of simplification. Okay, now let's swing over here and give this last one a shot. Here again, two things that look like we can maybe do some factoring. On top, we have a difference of squares again x squared and 25 are both perfect squares so that's gonna break up into two things x plus 5 and x minus 5 Oops. and then on the bottom let's see well what I'm gonna wanna do here I'm gonna factor a negative 1 out because my x squared term is negative and I like it to be positive because then it looks like these in which we can factor those trinomials so the first thing I'm gonna do is factor out a negative one and then I'm gonna flip these terms around so it's gonna be x squared I'm taking a negative one out of this minus 3x and then I'm taking a negative one out of this minus 10 okay if I distributed it back through I would end up back here where I started okay then this let's see if I can factor that I'm looking for factors of 10 with a difference of negative 3 well 5 and 2 so let's go ahead and set that up here so on top still x plus 5 and x minus 5 didn't do anything with that yet on the bottom well we said we've got that negative 1 don't lose track of that then we have gonna break up into two things the factors it's going to be plus and minus the signs because that's minus like so x and x then the 10 we said 5 and 2 well I want it to be minus 3x so I need to put the larger one with the minus so it's going to be minus 5 and plus 2 then I look look it over is there anything in common top and bottom sure enough we have an x plus 5 there and an x plus 5 in the denominator as well so those are gonna cancel out that becomes 1 and 1 let's hop up here with this and we have x plus 5 over at negative 1 don't lose track of that negative 1 and then we could just bring that as a negative out front here but I'm gonna leave it as a negative 1 like so okay and you could distribute it back through leave it like that whatever you want to do I like it like that okay so simplifying rational expressions when we're simplifying rational expressions what we want to do is find something that we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by and to do that what we're gonna to want to do is factor if possible 
We did a lot of factoring here. If you need to brush up on your factoring skills, don't be afraid to do that because that's going to be really, really important as we approach these problems. Then we find something that it has in common, both in the numerator and denominator. Divide that out of there, simplify it, and off we go. Hope this video is helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it. Anything you put your mind to.